deep within the Milky Way's Eagle Nebula, 6.5 thousand light years from us, lies one of the most famous and iconic nebulae ever imaged. This is the Pillars of Creation, and it's now been imaged by JWST, so we're seeing this in near infrared light and in better resolution than ever before. This lush landscape is sparkling here in the same gorgeous colours as the now famous Carina Nebula image, which was released as one of the first ever web images. We've gotten a brand new view of new stars being born out of the dust and gas of this nebula. And let's be honest, it is absolutely stunning. A nebula is just a massive cloud of space dust and space gas, and they provide the ideal conditions for forming new stars. Small over densities in the clouds give way to gravity and the surrounding particles collapse inwards and ignite, forming new stars. Towards the ends of the pillars, we see particularly red areas that look almost lava-like. This is the glow of material being ejected from new stars as they form. The radiation of the new stars pushing away material as it tries to collapse. These young stars, probably only a few hundred thousand years old, periodically shoot out jets and these jets then collide with the material that makes up the pillars, resulting in shockwaves that produce these wavy structures. The fact that it is glowing red tells us that hydrogen is present and emitting the near-infrared light picked up here by Webb's NERCAM instrument. In the wide shots, the cloudy pillars look a bit like rock, although they're far more permeable, and Webb's infrared eyes are perfect for peering through and seeing thousands of stars within, lighting up the whole scene. Every bright spot here with spikes coming out of it is a star, so we're seeing a huge amount of mass in this image. Actually, there are so many stars because the pillars of creation lie exactly in the plane of the Milky Way, so we're looking straight at a huge number of stars here. One thing is missing from this image though that usually is present in JWST photos. Notice that there are no background galaxies visible here. Every object you see is stars. This is because the nebula is so deeply embedded within the curtain of gas and dust that exists between stars, known as the interstellar medium, and this successfully blocks the light of distant background objects, even in infrared wavelengths, that are normally so good at sneaking through that dust. Away from the main pillars, we can see fainter wisps of dust still lighting up in front of the incredible backdrop of all those stars. The main pillars also contain countless interesting structures and smaller pillars and loops within their dusty bodies, emerging from the rusty desert landscape of the pillars. Lots of these details are similar to those we've seen in the Carina Nebula, and the images actually cover the exact same area on the sky. I have a full video breaking down the Carina Nebula image from JWST, so check out that video too to hear and see more about all of that. In this image, the redder the stars look, the younger they will be, and the bluer they look, the older they'll be. This new image is teaching us about how stars form and the environments they create when they do so. And by giving us more precise images of these things, we're allowing researchers to improve their theoretical models of how these processes occur. Of course, we've seen these pillars before. Hubble released a couple of famous versions of the image, first in 1995 and a revised one in 2015. The huge difference, other than the resolution and the colors, is the thick yellowy greeny background in the Hubble shot showing us how thick and dusty the environment that the pillars live in is. With Webb though, we can pierce through that dust and see countless more stars. Hubble can actually see a little bit of infrared light, so I used to use the visible and IR images of the pillars by Hubble to show the differences between what those two wavelengths can see. I guess now it's time to update that comparison and start using the Webb image instead. Other telescopes have also looked at the object, in pretty much every wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum. And here we can see quite the gallery of shots. Time though to add this new web image to the lineup, because this one is truly breathtaking. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this incredible JWST image with me. Please subscribe if you're new for tons more astro content, and leave me a comment below to let me know what you think of the picture. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!